Hello everybody. I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to perform a quad split inside of DaVinci Resolve. Let's hop right in. I have here my footage. Now you should have four videos for this assignment, but I'm just going to use one and I'm just going to keep pulling footage out of this one clip. I quickly import that and start looking at bringing down some clips to my timeline. Now I do want to bring things down with just the video only quickly drag that down. Now this project is really only intended to be two minutes in length. So let me just right click on this footage. This is going to be my base layer. I'm going to need three more layers on top of this. And one of the options in here is to change the clip duration. It's a really handy tool. I want to make this exactly two minutes long. So remember, the third value is minutes, second is seconds. These are frames. Right, so let's make it exactly two minutes. I'm going to change it and I'm going to zoom on into the project. Slide that over to the right. And that should do it. Now, once more, you should have three other clips that you've downloaded. And since we're going to do a quad split, these are eventually going to stack on top of each other like a staircase. So this one will probably be exposed for two minutes, the next one minute and a half, the next one 30 seconds. Um, so on and so on. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. So first things first, I want to make this look a little bit more interesting. So over in our toolbox, I'm going to search for a border. It's going to help us to frame up what this shot is meant to look like. Now I've got titles highlighted, so I can't see it. So I got to jump up to my toolbox. There we go. I'm going to drag colored border right onto my clip. Now the goal is to have this resize up to the top left hand corner. And if I start to zoom right now, we're going to see that it only zooms towards the center and ooh, something strange is happening. I can rotate the footage here. I can scale my footage. I can position it, but the border's not changing. An interesting puzzle. So, to overcome that, we want to actually recompose this footage into what's called a new compound clip. And you can do this with multiple layers and make compound clips, but this is just going to make sure that the effect is actually attached to the footage itself. So I'm going to call this clip one. Create it. And you'll notice that we have a new special looking clip up here in our media library. And if I wanted to, I could right click on it and I can open it in timeline and get inside and do work with it. But now that I've made that compound clip, when I zoom, highlight that clip. Now when I zoom, ah, there we go. We can see that the border is actually going with it. That's exactly what we want. But I'm eventually going to want this to zoom up to the top left hand corner. Hmm, interesting puzzle. So we have this thing here called the anchor point. And that's really the purpose of this exercise is to get a deeper understanding of what that does for us. When I rotate my image here, you'll notice that it rotates around that center point. If I move my anchor point off to say the left and up a bit, like so, and then rotate, you'll see that it rotates around that point there. So if I'm gonna make this rotation angle anchor point will land perfectly in the top left hand corner and I need to do a little bit of math. I know that my footage is 1920 by 1080 so if I just simply say 1920 divided by 2 that's going to be 960. Perfect. So I'm going to jump over here and move my anchor point to negative 960 like so. You can see the anchor point has moved to the far left. Now, for the top, that's 1080 divided by 2 is 540. We're going to remember those numbers through this process. So I can go positive 540 to move it to the top left hand corner. Now, when I zoom, it will zoom to that anchor point. Yeah, perfect. All right. So, I'm going to jump into animation down here. 
for clip one. I want the viewer to be able to watch the video at full size for a few seconds, maybe 15 seconds. So I can quickly jump down the timeline, watching my time code here, and just jump to 15. Roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to add I'm in or zoom so the system remembers those two integer values or this moment in time or this specific clip. And while I'm at it, I may as well turn on my keyframes here so I can just see that they're indeed being created. Perfect. Scoot down the timeline a wee bit here. And now I can either click and drag. Well, that's not going to be very accurate. Or I can just punch in 0.5. Since those two are locked together, that's going to be exactly 50%. Nice. Now, you should have several clips. I'm just going to keep digging into the same footage here. You should have 0, 01, 02, 03, 04. I'm just going to keep digging footage out of here just to make my life easy and create some in points and out points like so and after this animation takes place watch it here the viewer gets to watch and then after about 15 seconds it's gonna fade down into the corner i'm not a huge fan of that speed right now so just keep in mind that you can always retime your animations by dragging your keyframes closer together. Yeah, perfect. Let's see what that looks like. A little bit quicker. Oh, and once more, I might want to make this look nicer by having it ease in and out, as we discussed in the previous tutorial. I'm going to click this control here and have that turn into a curve. Shut down my splines right away. Now we have a nice smooth animation where it goes up to the top left hand corner. Now it's going to be jittery. I'll be honest. I'm working on an i9 Mac Pro and it still looks jittery on my computer. But don't worry about that. Uh, upon export, it's going to look awesome. So I'm going to go back into my footage up here and I'm going to start making what I refer to as my staircase. You'll see what I mean in a second. We just grab the footage and drag it down. You see it looks as though I'm stepping up into the next footage. So this means that after 15, 16 seconds, we're now going to start to see the next clip fade in. So I'm gonna use the fade control there and have that fade in. And we can still see the footage in the background play as that one jumps in. Now, colored border, drop it down right click, new compound clip, call this one clip two. Don't forget about that so we can scale the border. Did the fade go away? Sure did. So we always have to do that compound clip first before we do any kind of work. So now it'll fade in, open my inspector. I'm gonna want this down here at the bottom right now so that I can zoom down to the lower right corner and move my anchor point. This time we're gonna have to go positive, 960, and negative, 540. Put that anchor point down in the bottom right. Now once more, after about 15 seconds, so we'll go to 30. I'm just looking at my time code here as a reference. Nice. I can add my zoom keyframe at 100% and then step down a few frames and add another keyframe and just dial in 0.5. Awesome. It flies down there. Cool. Now, I need to be able to see this footage in the background for the full duration of the movie. So I'm going to have to grab this tail and extend it out. Oh, problem. I can shrink it. Oh, bummer. 
But for some reason, DaVinci will not allow me to scale into the footage that I've already created a compound clip with. I was hoping that if I went into the actual compound clip itself, by opening it in timeline here, that if I made the change in this space, that it would actually re uh, compose the footage out onto the root timeline. Doesn't seem to work, unfortunately. We go back to timeline one, open that up. I thought I would be able to, oh, hmm. extend it like so. Well, it seems to be working. What if I gave some more footage at the beginning inside of clip two? There we go, open the timeline. It is behaving the way I thought it should. Nice. So you can go inside of these compound clips and do work and they will make the world out on your master timeline functional. There we go. I'm going to need this second clip to be exposed for the entire duration of this movie as the third video loads in. Now I'm just going to speed up this part of the video so that you can watch me work quickly. There we have it. We have all of our four clips animating into the appropriate corner. And the final result looks something like that. Now I'm not going to hit play because I think we're going to see that there's a bunch of lag in my computer because of how expensive these visual effects are that we're doing. But I do want to triple check that my final output looks nice. Um, if you're seeing that these handles are getting in your way, you can always click on this button here to turn them off. Because I'm seeing a problem here. And I want you to be this specific when you're working on this assignment. That is a problem. These should all look perfectly lined up. So that layer has got something wrong. Which layer is it? So I'm going to turn this back on so I can actually see. There we go. It's layer four. Now, why, oh why is it not moving perfectly into that corner? Hmm. That's odd. It says 0 0.5. 960, 540. Notice that they're in the negatives. Hmm. Did I forget to pre-compose? That might be the problem. You just delete it. Sometimes deleting it and doing it again is just the best solution. I'm going to bring it down. Now I can start to use the staircase, these steps up as a visual cue as to when I want these things to happen. Put the color border on first. Then Recompose it. Oh, I didn't make it into clip four. That's what happened. Clip four. 
There we go. Yeah. Change my anchor point. Set a keyframe for zoom. Step down the timeline. Five. There we go. That looks perfect. Now, one awesome thing you can do with compound clips as well, if you have a timeline that's starting to get out of control, like this one, oops, accidentally brought some sound down. How do we get rid of that? Remember, we can unlink our sound with that button. Delete, delete, linking back on. I always turn that back on when I've used the tool. So if you want, if the, I'm going to want all these to fade out to black all at the same time. So I could try to match them all up or I can pre-compose all four of these into a compound clip. I'm going to call this final output. And now it's a single flat timeline on V1. But all of the hard work we did is still in the video. It's just now living inside of what was once called timeline one, which is better name would be original timeline. Spelt right. And if you want, you can always right click on a compound timeline and open in timeline, get access to your layers again. But final output, here, which is made up of this compound clip, is now one flat layer down here, which is awesome because if I now want to fade in and fade out across all of my hard work, I can easily just move that handle in and out. And it'll treat that like a composed video. Okay. I'll go frame by frame so that you can see the effect fading in and out. My computer is not running fast enough to demonstrate that in real time. And that, my friends, is how you do a quad split. Have fun. Happy animating.